What is up, everybody? Bingo here. I'm with the Dual Factory and a special guest this week who I don't even know what his name is. But this week we are kind of piggybacking off our last week's episode um, on the band list where we were talking about our expected hits or what we think is going to happen. This week we're going to do kind of more of a discussion on band list hot takes. We're each going to pick some cards that we have strong opinions about to make some movement on the band list and probably get into some discussions about those but uh before we get into that i did want to shout out somebody uh shout out to andrew he's been a long time listener he hit me up on instagram and says he loves the show so i just wanted to let him know i appreciate it but joe because you have the worst opinions out of the group i will let you take the first one is that how you feel (laughs) yeah we've already been uh discussing for at least 20 minutes now so we're all a little heated Go ahead. Uh, so what card I, I wanted to talk about, I think it should be off the list now, especially since everything that made it good is kind of like, you know, neutered. Uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon, right. 100%, I think should at least be at one copy. Explain your reasoning. So the whole, uh, the, the reason Ancient Fairy Bag, uh, got banned, right, is basically we can all be in consensus that it was the easiest way to just basically search any field spell in your deck, right? Yeah. Because we had cards like Destrudo and we had Dragon's Ravine at three and all that fun stuff. So if you you saw like copies of like Dragon's Ravine and you had like a level four monster, like your deck instantly was just able to search any field spell it wanted. And then there's obviously the fact that it summons a level four monster out of your hand and then you can just do in crazy like turn one combos. Now we fast forward after like the post ban list, all that fun stuff. Like Destrudo's gone, which is the best card for the abuse of Ancient Fairy Dragon because you no longer have an at will like searchable tuner that can be any level to turn into a level seven, right? But Ancient Fairy Dragon also could be like a consistency boost for other decks and stuff like that that desperately need it that can make level seven synchros. But you do it like it, it, it's like one of those cards like it's kind of like nerve wracking to think about coming back, especially since it can essentially search any field spell. So it gives a consistency boost to decks like uh, some rogue strategies I can think of, like ABC or for God's sake, whoever's still playing Spiral or anything like that. You know? Yeah i i I don't know if I if I'm behind you on that one because I mean that card is just so strong and. With the insane tuner support that we have right now, like, yeah, Destrudo's banned, but that's not stopping people from playing Synchro Combo. And I, I feel like that card being back is just asking for trouble, like, at least until Needle Fiber's banned. And, like, I can't get behind it. Like, I really want I mean, not- it, but, ah, oh, that extra, that free special summon, the field spell access, it, it's just, it's too much. It. I feel like it's going to get abused in combo and it's just going to end up right back where it is. I'm not disagreeing, but like right now, like what we have access to, especially with the lack of distributor, like making level seven synchros is like one of the most awkward numbers in Yu-Gi-Oh to make for synchro summoning. Like four is easy, eight is easy, five is easy, but like seven's like super awkward, even with like the Aurora Don combo right now. And like, yeah, we still have Halka Febrax or however the fuck you want to pronounce his name, but like it's, I don't know. I don't think it's as easy as everyone makes it out to be now, especially since, like, the ideal tuners are gone. Like, that's the thing. Yeah, I think the only thing that you really need to take a look at is the abuse of uh, field spells. Go on. Just being able to recur them over and over. Because if you have something like terraforming, you have set rotation, you have metaverse, and then you throw in another card that could get your uh, field spells going... It seems like it'd be easy to abuse ones that are not once per turn. Yeah, and the the thing, like, the argument I can't get behind right now is like there aren't a lot of good non once per turn field spells, and and that's like okay if we if we free ancient fairy and there is a deck that w- would highly highly benefit from it, it's just gonna there there will somebody will find a way to make it in that deck just to abuse it because. Once you have an idea for a combo, you know the Yu-Gi-Oh community, they're going to figure out a way to do it. Just because the sevens are awkward with the uh, the combos that we're doing right now, the, they'll find a consistent way to do it if it's if the payoff is worth the effort. I'm not disagreeing. It's just like the, it, it lost a lot of bi- the, well, I don't want to say genericity because that's not a real word, yeah. but it can't be splashed in every single deck. Like when you had Distrudo and Dragon yeah. Ravine could be put in any single deck. Yeah, when you had Fieldspell.deck. Yeah, I, I will back you on that. D- Distrudo is 
then probably the main reason that card got banned because oh, 100%. at the time when we didn't have Hulk and all we had was Distrito, like that was the only the only way people were going to make it. They're not going to play like fucking uh, what's the sync synchron that special summons itself for like the level five one. I forget. But, You're not thinking of quick draw sync round, are you? Yeah, they're, like they're not going to play cards like that just to have access to ancient fairy. Well, quick draw sync round only use bank synchro uh, synchron uh, synchro monsters anyway. Yeah, but you get my point. They're they're not going to invest two to three cards to get access to a field spell. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, abusing it in combo. Like I can just imagine, and I know you'd love this, Joe. Somebody goes through their whole combo. They slap uh, Fairy Dragon down at the end, and they use its effect to get Mystic Mine, and then slap that down on the field. Have I ever seen a, a, a combo Ancient player fairy, fairy to get mine? Mystic Mine? I'd be so I'd be pissed. <laughs> He just he's got like four negates on the board and he just ancient fairies out of Mystic Mind. Yeah, Ancient Fairy effect, <laughs> add Mystic Mind, play it pass. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> right. Alright, so think- that that was an interesting one. Um what are we calling you, Wayne? Uh, uh he is Francis. Francis, what is you what is your first one? Okay. Um I wanted to preface this by saying that I don't play Pendulum, um, but I think that um, Joker could probably come back to one. All right. Well, I know someone has strong feelings about this, and I'll let him talk. (laughs) Why you got to be like that? (laughs) What do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? So, all right, I'm 100% against Joker. And uh, for one, like... I know, like it, it searches any performer power, any magician. Does it search any other uh, one of those archetypes it's or no? Odd eyes, odd eyes. Uh, perform power and magicians. And the okay, so it searches all those, right? So it's kind of like it's their version of elemental hero Stratos, which Stratos is at three, was that one for the longest time. The problem mm-hmm. I have with cards like Skulker Bat Joker is when you entertain the idea of putting them at one, and then they're in the format. Then you entertain the idea of other cards being peeled off, like Monkey Board, which I'm just 100% not okay with. Because it's a one-card scale, and then there's a lot of things you can do off of the resolution of one Skulker Bat Joker. Like, right now, like, you might be 100% correct. Like, bringing it back to one probably wouldn't do nothing, but when you entertain that idea, then you start bringing other cards off the list, and then that card becomes broken. Like, look what happened. We got a whole wave of new uh, Pendulum cards. We got Electromite, and then they just... Here, we'll put Joker at three. It'll be all right. Just like, do you remember that? Like, that was awful. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was a not bad idea. Like, it was literally like plus like thirteen the format for one. It was just not fun. Yeah, I mean that that whole format was just a. It was a. It was a mess. But mm-hmm. right, one Joker, right now, under the context that it's not going to cause a monkey board peel off, and it's not going to cause yeah. plush fire to come off. I don't think it will either. Isolated Joker at one is fine. We don't have Electrum. Like, yeah, you can search it through other means. You can search it through, uh, was it Sorcerer? If you Pendulum Summon it and pop a card. You can search it yeah. through uh, Time Gazer Magician. Or not Time Gazer. Uh, Star? The fucking Star. X, X, Rank 4. Yeah. Um, but, like, the deck is crippled enough as it is. And I... I I pray to God Electrum never comes off the ban list. Like, I fucking hate that card. But <laughs> that, that card does way too much. <laughs> but I'm in the camp that Joker is fine. Mostly because I I love pure Pendulum Magicians. I think that artwork's great. I've said it a million times, but Pendulum's kind of... It's not doing bad right now, but it's... I don't even know if they would play this card because, like, what's the Magician lineup in... Pendulum right now. It's like Chrono, not, Chrono, not a, Chrono and Time Gazer. <laughs> you can't even search those. Yeah, well, no. you can search Time Gazer, but you can't. But yeah, you can't, you can't, search do, Chrono, you but. can't do anything with it. So I don't, know, yeah. I, just, I, I don't want to even entertain the idea of other cards coming off because one card came off. Yeah, but give it to Odd Eyes so they can search their their cards. All right, we're ending the podcast now. <laughs> hey, pure I, I think the Pendulum. Pendulum just needs the ability to get more cards into their hands since they can't summon them 
from the extra deck after they've already used them, aside from opening up zones with the link monsters. So I know that some people will disagree, what? but I just don't think that there's a viable pendulum summoning strategy. Not with the rot. Like, Let it rot. like where where their main like like it's not a wom a wombo combo deck. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, I mean, if you just look at the pendulum strategies, none of them are really doing anything worthwhile, despite what Triff wants yeah. to say. It's yeah, there, there's a couple that made top anything. cut. Yeah, I want to see, I want to see not well one not Cleefort and two, I want to see a pendulum deck that thrives at not just amassing a turn one board. And I know that's kind of like oxymoronic with the way the mechanic is designed and the cripplings that all the master rules have done. But I just, I associate pendulum with just like, okay, I lost a die roll. Let's hope he fucking misplays or I open two hand traps. Like I, I, that's what I'm scared about with pendulum. And I get why Joe would be afraid of, um, like monkey board coming back. Cause that is shit. I don't want to deal with. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that either. All right, any any more thoughts on uh on Joker? Nope. All right, so I am going to start with something I didn't plan on starting with, but Delinquent Duo to one. What card? Delinquent Duo. All right, it is, it's only good on, or it's only amazing on exactly turn one going first. And if you have one copy... You're sacrificing you you you're sacrificing consistency for power, right? Because if you top deck that turn three or like turn six, and it's been a grind game, it's, it's just a blank card, like most of the time. And maybe you'll rip a card out of your opponent's hand, but it's not going to do anything for you if you're in a top deck situation. And may like I could see people siding it at one copy and. I, I don't know. I just, I just I would like to see it come back just to kind of see what happens. But I one I never think that card should be at anything more than one, and two it's been on the ban list for like a decade. It feels like. And yeah, it can't be worse than Snatch Deal. Um, maybe. Uh, let's let's not talk about the horrors of Snatch Deal, please. <laughs> I still have nightmares. But uh. I love the card. I don't know, Delinquent Duo is, like, in a weird category because, like, I, I agree, like, it's not, like, nearly as powerful as it was. But, like, it's also, like, a super... It, it could be a very high-impact card, especially to, like... It still rips two cards out of your opponent's hand, like, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, it's one random, one chosen, right? Yeah, which... Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that, that's the choose. key, I think, where your opponent gets to choose one of the cards and they can... One, it could be a lot less impactful than it was when the card was originally banned. And two, it can actually be beneficial for them, um, given the right format, right deck. I'm not saying every deck wants to just pitch two cards, turn zero, but... I don't know. It's it's, it's an interesting card, because like, it's, like, it's like a super high-risk, high-reward card, right? Because like, you could delinquent with duel your opponent, and like you can also just like be benefiting their strategy, like our boy Aaron, who loves to play yeah, Orcus. You can just rip random Orcus cards. Or like... <laughs> Or yeah, you can hit dangerous, but on the flip side of that, like your opponent, like you could just snipe hand traps out of your opponent's hand, and you can like just combo off for free for the cost of a thousand life points, essentially. So like, it's high risk, high reward. I don't know if it like, I, I it's it's one of those cards. Like I want to say you could peel it off, but at the same time, I don't want to say it at this. Like I just I don't know. Yeah, what was DD taken away? at the same time as Forceful Sentry and um, Confiscation, were they all no. put on the list? or what? No, 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 no. The link, the link, the link would do a survive longer than Confiscation and Forceful Sentry. Those cards are actually insane. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> and it's, it's weird to say, like, I think Forceful, like, a card that shuffles back one is better than a card that discards two, but I would definitely argue that it... Uh, What's it called? Forceful Sentry is better. Yeah, I think Aaron made a good point. Uh, if you look at the current meta right now, though, discarding your opponent's Eldritch cards into their grave. Yeah, that, that would just... You, they pitch two Eldritch cards on your turn zero, and <laughs> oh, that, that's and then not you fun. Lose. Yeah, exactly. So uh, is anyone opposed to peeling it off? 
I'm not because, as you guys discussed in your podcast last week, this is the ban list to try stuff like this. And I had many conversations with Ray about this before he brought it up in your podcast. This is a very low risk situation. You can try it. If it blows up in your face, like Snatch Steel did, then why don't you fix it? Hey, I'm not cool. If it's fine, I'm not cool with it. it. Just leave it. I'm not cool <laughs> with it. It's fine. All right. Uh, any more talking points on it, though? We've been on it for probably like five minutes. Nah, we're All right. good. Joe, your go. Uh, wind up carrier Zen Mighty. All right. Yes. Let me hear you out. Look. So, obviously, for those of you who relived it, or not relived it, but did live in that situation, wind up format was not fun. Okay. No one liked getting their cards looped out of their hand. No one liked like, it. It just wasn't enjoyable. Right. That being said, one major difference in today's format versus back and wind up format is one. There are a lot more answers to the wind up loop, as in the plethora of hand traps that yeah, everyone plays. There's so days. many hand traps. Um, don't be wrong. Tugboat is cool when it resolves, but there's just simply much better, like just much better strategies. But you still have the winder loop, which is kind of scary. If you have one Zen Mighty, it's it's a little awkward, but you can still do it. However, it's 2020. There are way other, more viable strategies. There are way other, like the cards are just way yeah. better than what it was way back in the day. Hey, if you want a hand loop, just play water. Nah, seriously, like you're 100% correct. It's just more consistent, but like it'd be cool to see a card like that get peeled off, see wind ups get another consistency piece because now any two level threes equals. A magician out of your deck and you can see windups do a lot of cool things and i think it'd be the perfect place for it now obviously no one likes to entertain the idea of a hand loop but i think it's to the point where i don't think it makes a big enough difference being at one multiple copies probably not but i think it'd be okay to come back at one yeah uh so I, i'm gonna have to agree with you i've said this one before uh zen mighty i used to say, like back when firewall legal was legal i would say uh in order for it to come back uh, hunter has to get banned but firewall's gone. Um, there, the problem with windups right now is there's no, there's no supplemental engine that f- pairs really well with it. So you have to open exactly magician shark, or else like you're playing a really bad deck. And yeah, it, it's no fun for it, anyone. At that yeah, point. exactly. And it, it's unfortunate. Like we don't even have you know the the rogue support like brilliant fusion anymore because Konami wanted to take that away from us. So. If you don't open exactly Magician Shark, your deck is doing almost nothing. Give me back my Brilliant Fusion, Mom. So, uh, Joe or Francis, whatever, whatever we're calling you. Uh, He's a Pat Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Welcome. I mean, so I don't actually know enough about windups. I I did play against it once. Aaron was playing it uh, at our locals, and I. I think he told me the number of times that he actually got the hand loop off throughout the entire night was twice, and once was against me. But, I mean, the other two games that we played, the deck did absolutely nothing. Now, I don't know how how different that'll be with this card in it, but it's like you guys said. The water deck is much better at doing that than this is going to be, and I know that for sure from playing against Joe all the time with it and... I don't know. I don't like water the, where it's at right now, so I don't know if I would I will make this. one point against it. Like, even though I'm like I'm 100% okay with Zen Mighty, Zen Mighty coming off the list is uh, it is essentially an MX Saber Evoker for a specific archetype, yeah. and we've seen what Evoker cards do to the format. Uh, that being said, because it's archetype specific and only selling windups i still think it'd be all right but like it's still tutors monsters out of the deck for free like yeah. that can't be a- and yeah and it's a generic two level three monsters i don't know somebody smarter than me could probably figure out a deck to put that into See, with a small windup engine i i'm fine with it and that's because there was a there was a six card hand loop for windups when we had gumblar there was a five card hand loop 
it was difficult, but there was a five card hand loop with one firewall and like it still was inconsistent. Um, and yeah, there, I think Aaron was playing the Gumblar one yeah. that you're talking about. So I, I'm completely fine with it, but um, Doug, Joe, Bob, Wayne, whatever your next name is, what's your what's the card? Um, I want to talk about. Um, I don't know if this one's okay coming off here, but we can we can talk about this. Um, uh, Teller Knight Ptolemaeus. Okay, give me give me some some reasoning, some more words. Okay, so. I believe that the reason this got banned, and you can correct me, and I may change my mind about wanting it to come back, was because of how easily it could make Azathoth. Even though we didn't have Azathoth at the time, now yeah. Azathoth's come and gone. Yeah, I mean, it was essentially uh, the rank-up spell, the Phantom Knight rank-up spell. That's essentially what it was. Same thing. Now, I remember playing it when it came out, because I was playing Teller Knights, and... I would just use this to shit all over shit all players. Um, it was a good time, um, but I'm wondering now. You have to have you have to be able to detach three materials. You can make it with two, but you have to detach three to get the a rank. Effect. Yeah, yeah, one rank higher, a rank five. It can't be a number monster. I don't know. I'd have to look at the number monsters to see if that's relevant or not. And then, like, the detaching seven materials to skip your opponent's next turn. Yeah, that's never going to happen. I, I, don't, that's, I don't think that's a realistic <laughs> effect. There might be some cheese with, a, what's it called, a Gossip a Shadow. Yeah, yeah Gossip Shadow. With a six Sam uh, Gossip Shadow shenanigans, mm -hmm. but, who, like, who cares? Well, yeah, but, I mean, what, what rank five are you going to make that's going to break the format now uh, yeah i mean the only thing that thing's going to go into is fucking infinity well yeah. i am a thousand percent against this ptolemaeus being peeled off at one right. and you already mentioned a couple reasons there because remember when number 86 orangamidiad was out and we kept making jokes about the gossip and ghost shadow fucking bullshit rank three and look where that fucking got us there were eight material wrong ghosts everywhere yeah but and not only that but like you still have a lot of the tools there that are still necessary and you could like we're joking about it but that like detach seven effect is actually very feasible like a hundred percent feasible not only that but like it doesn't seem like a lot but you're giving rank four toolbox decks and like they come and go out of the format as like meta contenders all the time you're given access to every single deck out there to either an infinity or you can, like, make it Pleiades there in their turn, or Stellar and Teller Diamond, which obviously isn't that powerful. But, like, you're giving decks access to all of this. And, like, in some strategies, like, that's just, like, super fair. So, like, I, I, the card is super cool. I love what it does. But it's, like, it's to the point, like, when you make, when you bring cards like that, they're so abusable in formats that I don't think it can safely come off. Like, it just, I 100% cannot. All right. Well, let me let me retort to that. Okay, the reason that Bamboozling Gossip Shadow worked with Arangamniad was because it was a number monster. Okay. Um, so Bamboozling Gossip Shadow only works with other number monsters as far as stacking all those materials. So I don't know how you're getting seven materials underneath the Ptolemyus. Well, I didn't know the number part, but like, yeah, we don't yeah, read cards. I, I looked though. it up just to check. <laughs> Yeah, I looked it up just to check. Okay, and I mean, Rangamnia was a, a number monster, which is why it worked. But you wouldn't be able to, well, and you can't even play Rangamnia anyways, but um, you wouldn't be able to get Ptolemyus on top of seven ma materials unless you could get, well, how are you even going to get seven level four monsters? It's d yeah, it'd be difficult. It's, it's, I don't think that card can safely come off. Like I'm not okay with it. Hey, and that, you know, you don't have to be. That's the point of the video. But it, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that's yeah, it's probably possible in a dedicated like this is what I want to do strategy. But so is milling your opponent's extra deck with world legacy scars. You know, it's just no one's going to do it consistently enough to be viable. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, Who knows? Maybe MBT will do one of his I'm videos sure it where he there. tries to make this work. We disregard any material in this chat. You know this. <laughs> All right. So we are at 25 minutes. Damn, we're already at fucking 25 minutes. All right. Um, I know Joe has differing opinions, but... I don't want to say this card because I feel like the only way it will come off is if we have a freaking uh, errata to it, and I don't want that. So, But Yadagarasu is fine to come back. I'm fine with it. Please explain to me why I think it's fine to come back. I want to hear this. Okay, so the only... If you're playing that card as a combo deck to lock your opponent out and then just completely stop them from drawing cards, then it's just a combo piece that's not sitting in that you're not doing anything with in your hand. And that like we don't have Chaos Ember Dragon, we don't have easy, consistent hand loops outside of the Diva deck, and I doubt they'll play one fucking token copy of Yadagarasu. I just think it would be super interesting to see if it did actually do anything. I am not going to agree or disagree on the peeling off of Yadagarasu, but the biggest complaint in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community are cards that simply say no. All right? And Yadagarasu just just says, there is no draw yeah. phase. The, That's it. I think, I think the... The biggest complaint in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, out like it, it goes in in this order, is Yadagarasu's effect, hand loops, floodgates. <laughs> but uh, like it's such a it's such a specific setup to get that to resolve effectively. That like it, it's your normal summon for the turn. Like you have to stop your opponent from having anything to deal with it at all and then you have to consistently like you just have to be swinging face with 200 bird mm-hmm. i mean i played in the format like i was i was playing in local tournaments at that point in time oh yeah. and my my friend played the deck i'm still fine with it coming back as frustrating as it was here here is a another reason how, how long has yada been on the ban list since what 2004 yeah, bouts, yeah. Yeah. So we need to educate these youngins what this card is about. <laughs> no, no, I do not think oppressing them with Yadagarasu <laughs> is the legitimate reason to pull it. Up. Like, no, like that, that's an instant no for me, guy. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, uh, we're not in caveman Yu Gi Oh anymore, and there's no Chaos Emperor Dragon to destroy it, everything in your life before this little bird comes and pecks you to death. If, 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 there, if, there, if, there was a, if there was a spirit monster that when you normal summoned it, attacked, looped one card out of your opponent's hand uh, and, until this card, uh, until the end of the next turn. Like, no, one, no one's going to play that card. Are like, we 100% I, forgetting that cards like R. Thomas still exist? Like, they have an archetype-specific Stratos. Now. So what? The... Like, all right. So you normal summon Stratos and search it, and then what? Well, I mean, it's spirit, so obviously the answer is they don't do shit. But I mean, like, you can still search it, yeah. like reliably. You that's can like search part. anything if you try hard enough. And that's you, what we call cheating. you LP out Brotar with the right board, and you can search any card in the game. Chill. That's not even the same. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just reaching. Was it Dark Wing Beast? All right, I'm sure we could set that up. Bro, it, it is a wind. Oh, yeah, it fiend. is wind. <laughs> it's a fiend. It's not even a bird. It's a fiend. It's the spirit of a bird. Cause it's... All right, well, I mean, we're at 29 minutes. I I, I think we can go a little bit longer. Um, Joe, d- do another one. Just make it a little bit quicker. Why are you going to be like this? Why are you going to put me on the spot like this? I don't know this shit. Oh, Harpy's Why don't we look at some limited? Yeah. Okay. Harpy's 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 Harpy's
good. Like, yeah. Back row is not good anymore. Yeah. Just like give, back, give us that, give us Heavy Storm, give us True. Well, no, no, not true. no, no, no. Then leave Heavy Storm exactly where it is. No, 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 Destroying no, 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 no. your own cards is way yeah. more yeah, feasible. Come on, bro. I love. Ah, give me the power three back. We have we have reborn. We have fucking dark hole. Give me the storm. I want it. No, if you want the power three, you need graceful greed and DD. Bruh. That's Bruh. not gonna happen. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Just give, Doug, give me storm. Doug, give me a quick one. Um, I'll give you three. Two. I'll give you two because they're easy. Uh, Pankratops and Unicorn. All right, uh, Panker Tops 100%, I feel like, should be at three. It's a mm-hmm. staple. I don't know like, why it's a two. It's, it's at one, isn't it? Or, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know why it's not at uh, more than one. Mega Multiple Cop. You, you said what? King, uh, uh, I couldn't hear you, Joe. Panker Tops, I, I don't think it should come back. Mega Multiple Copy is it like, don't get me wrong, like, Yu Gi Oh! needs like, more versatile cards, but I think like that like might just be a touch too much. All right. I don't know. I. Maybe against Rogue, it's a touch too much, but against Combo, oh, yeah, it's I can de- almost a necessity. That card, how many times have you top deck Panker Tops against Rogue at Locals and been like, thank fucking God? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because they have their one, their one card that you can't out normally until you pull Panker Tops. All right, so I, I have to mention Zodiac Rap here because it's my podcast uh, turn and... I can't talk about anything without talking about Zodiac Rap here. Should be at two. It should not be at three. It's completely fair. Doesn't do anything. It doesn't do enough without Broad Bowl. And my other one, I had another one. I totally just forgot it. If heroes can have two malicious, then Zoo can have two. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Rap here is freer than malicious, but. Dang. I mean, it is, but like, totally. Rap here, cool. Rap here, here be cool at two oh. because it gives you like additional like rank four fodder. But all right, my my other one was uh, shout out to Ray, spellbook of judgment to one uh, to one. Y'all gonna make me lose my motherfucking right. mind? Let, Did you just drop your dragon ruler let, deck? Let, Joe? <laughs> let me hear why you don't want it to come back. Look, so. I will give you the credit that clearly one copy of Spellbook of Judgment probably is not going to shake up things as much as I think it is. But one, if we all remember, that one spell card gave an entire deck the playability to play against a tier zero strategy. Okay. It also, Specifically that it also entertains the idea that you could play it going first and it could very easily pull out cards like Jaugen if it, the format deems it necessary and it's a good card again. Actually, no, it would be. It'd kind of be insane against uh, Elvich right now because, like, you could summon a Kaiku and they couldn't banish anything out of their graveyard, which that seems insane. It turns Block yeah. Dragon off. Like, doesn't, there's doesn't a lot Golden of Boy out Jaugen on its own or Kaiku on its own? I'm, sh- I'm sure it does, but you have to, like, draw like that and, like, it, 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 there's no other out at that point. It's just like when you're in Dragon Rule format, like, you had to draw Blaster to out it. Yeah. See, but the, like, it's like it's just one of those things. Like, it just it does too much. Yeah, you have to open it for it to do that, though. See, we or say that you have to open it or burn resources, and like you, you're yeah, if you search that if, if you search that card, if you search judgment, right? You have to activate secrets, masters, and then something else, like tower or. Like, I'm not disagreeing at that point. Like you're absolutely correct, but like at the same time, like that's what the deck's going to do naturally. Yeah. And you want to put like a bomb in a deck like that? Like I'm not that. That's not. Yeah. Now, uh, the Crowley, the first prophesier, might change things a little bit. Like if there's a n- nice little, sp- nice little spellcaster engine that can get that online, but I don't think it's going to do anything. Like not in this, not in the sense I. No, pretty much nothing we've mentioned would destroy the format, right? That's not what we're going for, except maybe Yadagrasu. I guarantee you there's people listening to our podcast beating their heads against the desk right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're at 35 minutes. I think that's a good place to call it. Uh, Joe, you got any uh, final thoughts or comments or like one last minute thing like you just personally really want to see off the ban list? 
I don't have any last minute things, but can I say it? Yeah. Douglas French has no sauce. Take a low, you have no sauce. No. Hey. All right, Wayne, party on. Hey, party on, guys. All right, uh, you got any final thoughts? Um, free masterpiece. All right, Band Dynamite, you can have masterpiece all you want. Uh, trap test shoot to three. No, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, guys, if you have enjoyed this podcast, please remember to check us out same time, same place, 8 a.m. iTunes, Google Play, 10 a.m. on YouTube. And I got nothing else besides I really hope the man list is interesting because I am bored as shit right now. Peace out. Hey, bye.